Welcome, dear friends, to Cardiac Radio at 11 p.m., nourishing our souls with one more Immortal Messages. Immortal Messages is this program based on the book Psychophonic Instructions. And Psychophonic Instructions relied on a mediumistic meeting. And during those meetings, after the rescue work of suffering spirits, the illuminated entities came through Chico Xavier to deliver to you and I consolation, clarifications, warnings, illumination for immortality. And Chico Xavier received them through spoken mediumship. But today, we have a unique message. Why? Also because of what happened in the meeting. It was very, very interesting. This is about beating for some pile. The message is titled Christ at the Helm. I'll tell you a little bit about uh, him first, then what happened in the meeting, and finally the message. Pitencur Sampaio was a Brazilian who incarnated in Brazil in the city of Laranjeiras. In 1834, he discarnated in 1895. He lived 61 years of age. And in the state of Espírito Santo, which is neighboring Rio de Janeiro state, he became not only a lawyer, a poet, a journalist, but a politician. He was a house rep of representative from the state of Espírito Santo. And later, he became the pre pre president of the province of Espírito Santo. It's like the governor at the time. It's about Brazil, the colonial Brazil. And he came from a Portuguese family and who immigrated in Brazil, though he was born there. And he became a spiritist as well. He was very committed. He opened with friends a spiritist center in Rio de Janeiro named uh, Spiritist Society of Study Groups, God, Christ, and Charity in 1876. At some point, there were some problems in Brazil. It was hard to be a spiritist back then, much harder than it is nowadays. And they they changed it. They opened a new center with uh, two other friends, Sayão and Frederico Jr. Frederico Jr. is Brother Jacob from the book Volte, I Came Back, that we have studied here at Cardiac Radio and can watch again the whole playlist of that book in our Facebook playlist, I Came Back or you can go to YouTube. If you want more references, just write to us at cardiacradio at gmail.com and we will share the news. And it's in SoundCloud as well at Cardiac Radio as the podcasts are available there. Later, they formed a group named Grupo Espírita Fraternidade, Fraternity Spiritist Group. And it's interesting because after the discrimination of Brother Jacob Frederico Jr., who is there to talk to him, beating Curso Paulo and other friends, Guilherme Ribeiro, and we have studied here as well, and others. So he was so committed, so committed to education, to culture, to social progress. To spiritism, he participated in so many ways. He was even the first director of the Brazilian National Library and was the first one to receive the title, too. He was so committed, very serious, that Chico Xavier revealed to many scholars that Bittencourt Sampaio is the ambassador of the archangel that guides the protecting spirit of the country, Brazil, of Brazil. He is the ambassador, Bittencourt Sampaio, is the ambassador of the archangel or 
in other words, the protecting spirit that in the name of Jesus is coordinating the efforts in Brazil. Hmm. Mamma mia. Big deal. I remember when we were in Brazil in 2017, it was December, no, yeah, November, yeah, sorry, it was November, the beginning of November, yes, it was November 1st, I forgot now, but now I remember, November 1st, which is the celebration of Professor Euripides Barsanufo's discarnation, we were in the city of Sacramento in Minas Gerais, and Carol Correa was there with us, with my family as well, Carlos and I in Virginia, and my parents, and we were there visiting Professor Euripides Barsanufo's school and Spirit Center, and the adorable Alzira Bessa, who is the Great grandniece of Professor Lipitz Barsanufo and the principal and the coordinator of the center there and uh, the Spiritist uh, School in Sacramento, founded by Lipitz Barsanufo. In a mediumistic meeting, she channeled the very message from Bitinkur Sampaio. Yes. So he knows you, he knows me, he knows all of us. He's keeping an eye. All these loving spirits are keeping an eye because they love God. They respect and revere the Christ of God on earth. And they are really in true alignment. But tonight he has a message for us that is unprecedented especially at the critical times that you and I are facing. But you know, the interesting part of this message before we begin is how it came along. Arnaldo Rocha describes to us, it's almost a page of the book. He says that the person who was in charge of the tape recorder was not present. So Arnaldo Rocha had to be in charge of it. And he says that by the time he was operating the tape recorder, he observed that Chico Xavier was already showing, manifesting that the spirit was going to communicate through him. And this is interesting because people who are inexperienced, inexperienced in mediumship, they, they don't understand how things work. Before spirits are connected to us, before we speak the voice of the spirit, they're connected to us sometimes days. And when they come closer and when the message is about to come, everything changes. Our whole physiology changes. The whole physiology of the medium. Read the paper by Dr. Andrew Newberg. Our brains change, the medium's brain its activation, our physiology change, our brain waves change. So that's why we need a responsible, a responsible, very loving, caring, mediumistic group that is specially compassionate towards the mediums because the mediums are the ones who are in the front line of these communications. When they are coming from above, like between Kursan Pai or Chico Xavier, it's much easier. But if we don't have a unison, a core, it's not going to happen. How often I see spirits who want to communicate, but if we don't have a core, they're not going to communicate. Because it doesn't depend only on the medium. This book is the living proof of it. And Arnaldo Rocha says, and I thought that we were being visited by a high-ranking spiritual messenger, and we were not mistaken. And he was polite, clear, beautiful voice, very succinct, very objective. And talking about the magnificent figure of Jesus at the head of spiritism, 
And in the final reading, he identified himself. The advisor said goodbye. We closed the meeting. We moved to study the message, hearing it again. However, with the greatest disappointment, we noticed that the recorder didn't work. He hadn't worked. We had had lost the word of the great teacher. And making a comment on the speech heard, most of the companions moved away from the room. However, a group of six, so you see some people left. We have about like 26 remained. And they remained longer examining their machine and regretting what happened. One hour elapsed from the end of our duties. One hour. And we were preparing to withdraw when the medium announced that he was hearing from our spiritual friend, Jose Javier, the following morning. So Chico Xavier's brotherhood discarnated. While they're examining the machine, comes and says, do not worry. May May, the spirit's director, and I recorded the word of the benefactor who was among us in passing. So it was recorded in the spiritual realm. See how, how little we know about mediumship? Spirituality. We're always surprised by things. It humbles us. And he says, being silent, and the medium will be able to hear it from our machine, pinning it to the paper. So he says that Chico Xavier, if we stay in silence, Chico Xavier is going to hear the recording from the spiritual realm and put it on the paper. So they sat around, and after a prayer, Chico Xavier explains that he's seeing a small recorder handling, handled by his spiritual friends and said that he heard the message beginning to write moderately, highlighting the ongoing hearing. And however, Chico Xavier writes and punctuates at the same time. And why is he highlighting this? Because when you are mediumistically writing, especially in a language like Brazil, where you have so many types of, you know, punctuations, you don't have time. But he found it odd that this was happening. So mentally, as Arnaldo Rocha is holding the paper for Chico Xavier to write, he then thinks, oh, if Chico is listening to the recorded message, how can he punctuate it? Are we facing a dictation or a common psychography? And just as we ask the question in thought without expressing it, the medium interrupted the writing for a moment and explained. My friend, Jose recommends you that while Meme is running the recording, he's dictating the punctuation for bare security of our service. You see? So it's like, Chico Xavier is listening. Meme is running the recording. And Jose Javier is helping with the punctuation. What a beautiful teamwork effort. And you think mediumship is just like that. It comes like, boom. Beautiful. Oh, what a good medium. No, we depend on the group. Sometimes the medium cannot display it all because we lack the unison of the group. Item 341 of the Medium's Book by Kardec. Condition for presence of good spirits. Devoid of bad spirits, unless they are suffering, but not obsessing. The group. What is the condition? Perfect commonality of ideas and sentiment. There are more items. Feelings that are in agreement with the Christ teachings. So if I am at a meeting and somebody here looks at me, uh, maybe Vanessa is faking it. 
Or maybe that person is not. Their meeting is open to the attack of bad spirits. We need to trust everyone. We need to be on the same page and say, as Mr. Joseph often says, come on. We're not here for a walk in the park. We don't leave our homes to be here spending an hour, two hours, three hours together because we have nothing else to do. We're here because we want to learn. We want to express our love for one another and the others that come to be receiving help. And we want to work. Right? So, interesting because Arnaldo Rocha says he was so surprised with the clarification. And when Chico Xavier finished the writing, he read it aloud, we studied it, and this message is unprecedented. Are you ready now? I know you are. You're like, Lanis, I've been ready all along. But now we understand how it came about. Who be the course was, and is, and tonight. We're delighted to revisit his visit. Let us listen from him because tonight this message is for us. It's for you and for me, for all of us. Let us visualize Bintegur Sampaio saying, my friends, May the protection of our blessed mother embrace us and enlighten our hearts. Christ, at the center of spiritist edification, is the basic theme for those who have espoused the ideal of a pure and broader life. It anguishes those who have already unveiled their hearts to eternal truth beyond death. The cult of irresponsibility to which many of our companions devote themselves, whether in systematic doubt or accommodation in inferior processes of human experience. When spiritism translates return to pure and active Christianity, presiding over the renewal of the earth. With all our respect for ennobling research, we believe that any inquiry into the survival of the soul by those who have already received the spiritist knowledge is now obsolete because such knowledge about immortality is precisely the sacred basm of our commitments before the Lord. Over 10 millennia ago, in the higher temples of Egypt in ancient Ethiopia, mediumistic phenomena were simple and commonplace. Among Assyrians and Chaldeans of every remote times. This obsession was practiced with foundation on enlightenment of unhappy spirits. Preceding classical antiquity, Zoroaster in Persia, in Persia was visited by heavenly messengers. And even before the Christian era in old China, mediumship was devoted with the collaboration of music and prayer. But the exchange with the discarnate, except for the high teachings in the initiatory sanctuaries, kept the oracular function of sorcery, intertwining with the ordinary problems of material life, be it between warriors and philosophers, women and merchants, masters and slaves, nobles and commoners. The minds of the people in Thebes and Babylon, Persepolis and Nanjing, 
did not count on the splendor of the magnet star, our Lord Jesus Christ, whose kingdom of love was being raised among humankind. But today, the gospel shines in our worldwide culture. Within the reach of all consciences, and it is simply our duty to attach it to our own lives. Spiritists, with Kardec, you have taken up the resplendent beam of good news, which lay eclipsed in the shadows of the Middle Ages. Let us understand our mission as workers of the light, cooperating with the Lord that defined a new world. Do not ignore that today's civilization is a great boat under the storm. But while the mast oscillates and topple over breaking cross beams to the shouts of the disoriented crew, before the sharp nail that ignites the moral night of the world, Christ is at the helm. Serving Jesus, therefore, therefore, serving Jesus, let us repeat, comforted, comforted and happy. Christ yesterday, Christ today, Christ tomorrow. Praise be the Christ of God. Be thinkful sometime. It's a lesson in history. It's a lesson about mediumship. And it's a warning. Yeah. He begins talking about very deep, very deep knowledge for us. Remember, he's talking to you people who embrace spiritism. So if you're watching this and you are not familiar, you may come back to this message later on. But he's saying that those who already embraced it, this message, he treats us as friends and he asks for the blessing of the blessed mother, Mother Mary. And he says that the Christ is at the center, at the foundation of the spiritist dissemination. The teachings, it's not about the label, it's about the teachings. And he says more, that once we embrace it, this ideal become pure and broader. Our lives become pure and broader. But he says, there's so much anguish on those who discarnated, are ahead and observe us spiritists in this cult of irresponsibility. Cult of irresponsibility. And we may be asking why? Two reasons. One, when we have systematic doubt. We have people who are spiritists, but they don't study mediumship. We know about spirituality, but we need to study it all. It's a science. Some people say, I believe in all this, but Andre Louis' books are so intense in imagination. It's not imagination. It's not fiction. It's description. And if you read other books by Amalia Domingo Soler, if you read books by Yvonne Pereira and other mediums, you're going to see that Andre Louis' books are very subtle in so many ways compared to the graphic explanations that we have in other books. Systematic doubt. It's when I see people going to the saint, yeah, I come here because it feels good, but I'm not so sure. You know, I still have my questions. He 
He's saying that that attitude is a coat to irresponsibility. But why? We want to know why. Two types of currents. As we feel and think, we create a mental wave that associates with currents of thoughts, vibrations. When we have this systematic doubt, it's a sign that we're not studying, that we're not applying ourselves, that we're being in inertia, that we're being, sorry to say, but lazy. Yeah, I'm not so sure. Well, sit down and study. Identify, find out. Yeah, but one day I'll do it. Irresponsibility before life. What kind of mental wave we are creating? Constructive or destructive? Destructive. Because we're constructing nothing. There's no neutrality. But Vanessa, I'm just waiting for one day. Well, but... As far as we know, life goes on, really goes on. We can't wait. We have to be pushing and pushing and pushing. Like Carla Credo, pretty soon we're gonna be turning nine years, July 4th, 2020. Every year, the spirit mentors through mentor Joseph say, this is the plan for the next year. This is the plan for the next year. This is the plan for the next year. A year to fulfill it. And I'm always surprised because often we surpass. Why? Because they say, if you really apply yourself, we're always going to give more. And it's in the gospel, according to spiritism. Explain the mechanism. Jesus said, for those who already have, they're going to receive more. And those who don't have, it's going to be taken. What is it? You apply yourself in the spiritist works, in the duty of the heart, in your family, at work, everywhere. And then spirits, the good spirits, God, through people, bring you more. Okay, you're doing great. Now, more. It's like a good student. You look at a good student and you say, I'm going to give you something even more. You're going to advance even more because you're applying yourself. It's like uh, an Olympian athlete. You give them a proposal. They break through their own record and then you push even harder. And then one day they receive the gold medal and we're surprised. We shouldn't be surprised because they really work for it. So he's saying here, we can't be irresponsible. Like, oh, I don't know about forming a group or mediumship. I don't know. Friends were being asked to come up with the fulfillment of our reincarnation. And the second one is the accommodation in inferior processes of human experience, meaning addictions, passions, being lazy, idle. We spiritists cannot be that irresponsible. These are Birkin Kursampayo's words. And he says, we can no longer come to mediumistic meetings just to prove that life goes on. Oh, ooh, ah, ooh. No, we can't be like this. We're past that. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Ooh, look at what a coincidence. The facts match. No, we're not wasting our time with curiosity, proving that life goes on. It's deeper than that, he says. The knowledge of our immortality is the sacred foundation of our commitments before the Lord of life. So you and I, for millennia, he says, and he proves a point, he says, guys, 
for 10,000 years, you and I have been living in different civilizations since ancient times. Egypt, Ethiopia, Persia, China. And we've been mediums in oracles or not. We've been doing this obsession things. But, he says, this exchange were actually twisted to serve people's purposes in their ordinary lives. Read the books by Andrea Lu, by Emmanuel. 2,000 years ago, 50 years later, in these two books you're going to see, the mediums of the past, instead of using it to benefit everybody or to expel the bad spirits from the person, they were making money and they were also intervening in people's daily lives. And he says here, nobody at the time counted on the splendor of the magnet star, Jesus Christ, whose kingdom of love has been raised on amongst humankind. So today he says, and this was 1950, let me see, 55. Yeah, June 2nd, 1955. So 65 years ago, he came to say that the world already knew about Jesus. Now with the internet, everybody's hearing about Jesus, even in countries where there's no former Christianity big time. But people are more and more and more and more and more being exposed to the teachings of the Christ. So he calls you and I, he says, our duty, one, is to absorb this consciousness, the Christ consciousness. Two, he says, we need to understand our mission as workers of the light. So you and I today are being invited to be workers of the light of the Christ. And he gives us a beautiful analogy. We are in this beautiful sheep, sheep, sorry, not sheep, sheep under a storm. And today it's a big storm, huh? Big storm, the coronavirus and so many things happening in the world. And he says, the crew is desperate, screaming. And he says that the mast is toppling over. But rest assured, the Christ is at the helm. He is the captain. And he's saying, stay strong, because we are going to sail across this storm, and we're going to survive. And he says, let us serve the Christ tirelessly. Did you hear? Tirelessly. How often when I have to do the live programs, I am tired because, you know, when you have children to do 10,000 things, at 11 p.m. you're like, and then Mentor Joseph says, when is? so short and I said no but I like it he says my body oh my gosh my physical body he says push <laughs> it's almost like late for sometimes like push and I say really come on physical body let's do it and we need to conquer this tired feelings in life we can't be derailed from doing the good. And he says to us, let us repeat, comforted and happy, Christ yesterday, Christ today, Christ tomorrow and every day. You wanna repeat it? Christ yesterday, Christ today, Christ tomorrow and every day. One more time, Christ yesterday, Christ today, 
Rise tomorrow. Christ every day. Comforted and happy. We're going to repeat it every day. This is our prayer. We hope to be back tomorrow here at Cardiac Radio. That's our exercise for the next 24 hours to sing the song with Bittencourt Sampaio. Christ yesterday, Christ today, Christ tomorrow, Christ every day. Okay? All right. This is our prayer, our exercise, and we hope to be back with you here at Cardiac Radio. In more immortal message, the last one, because this is almost the end of the book. Psychophonic instructions. But we'll be back here at Cardiac Radio with a special program with the final episode by Emilio and many other things. Because Cardiac Radio is always nourishing our souls. Why? Because Christ yesterday and Christ today, Christ tomorrow. Christ every day. Thank you, friends.